thanks everybody for joining us today. I know everybody's really busy doing uh, doing a lot of stuff. So uh, thanks for taking the time to join us today. Uh, a lot of what I'm going to talk about is um, uh, kind of building on everything we've heard up to this point. So it's really kind of deep diving into the high availability uh, solutions that you, that you can design on the fabric um, and making sure the, the overlay you're building is going to match the, un, match the underlay that's built on. So, so let's get started and, and start uh, diving into it. Um, the Equinix's history is really Metcalf's law in motion. And, and I say that because, um, you know, Metcalf's law is the value of an interconnection or the value of a network is uh, proportional to the, to the number of interconnections you have. So if you look at Equinix's history, you know, we started out with, with internet exchanges, uh, then um, content providers came along and wanted to be part of the, the internet that was growing at the time and said, where do we do it? And they looked and said, well, the internet exchanges have already been kind of formed. So let, let's kind of be in close proximity to that. Uh, you know, several other exchanges came along, financial exchanges. And now, you know, the, the cloud providers came along. The cloud providers asked the same question and got the same answer. And they said, where do we want to be? And, and they saw the evolution of where all these other things were and decided to be in close proximity to where all those other uh, exchanges had started to crop up. So if, if you look uh, on the right at the fabric, you can see there's a lot more now than just uh, an internet exchange or just a, a, you know, an, an interconnect, to, uh, interconnect to another network provider. You know, SaaS applications, IaaS applications, uh, supply chain. There's a lot of stuff now that's part of that interconnect, uh, rich ecosystem of interconnectivity um, that everybody wants to connect to. Um, when I started out, I, I, I did this when I worked uh, as, a, uh, as a solution architect for a large financial provider. And the, the initial cloud on-ramp we did was just uh, spun up an AWS uh, instance in Chicago and, uh, and created a VPN tunnel over to that. And, and it was something at the edge of our network. It was, you know, a dev test. It was a lab environment. Just go play around with it. So didn't really take a lot of HA. It was just, you know, spin something up and go play around with it a little bit. Well, you know, as we've all seen, it, it really accelerated, you know, and things that have happened the last couple of years. It really uh, caused the digital transformation to accelerate even more. Um, so all of these things that used to be at the edge of the network that were dev test are not really that anymore, right? The, the core of your network is kind of, is moved to the edge. So it, it really uh, now more than ever, uh, you have to build high availability solutions just like you've built for the last 20, 30 years in your own data center. Uh, when the core was in your data center, now the core is at the edge. So you don't do anything any differently. You build the same uh, high availability solutions at the edge of the network, um, you just have to use a little bit different building blocks and you have to think about it a little bit differently because uh, in a lot of cases you're using somebody else's building blocks. So, so that's a lot of what we're gonna, we're gonna talk about today. Um, but a couple of things I wanna point out, if, if you see co-location and edge services at the bottom, they're the two ways that you get ingress, uh, that you can ingress into the fabric and take advantage of that, that rich ecosystem of interconnectivity. Uh, co-location is uh, just that you you know you, you buy a cabinet, you put your uh, physical gear in it, and you start creating connections and, and consuming the fabric. Uh, uh, edge services um, are virtual services, um, and network edge is one of those. So, if you want network agility, you don't want to wait. You you know you've got minutes instead of months to get something up and running. Edge services is, a, is an option. Um, to, to really uh, consume all those services in the cloud very quickly. So again, all, all, those, uh, all those services, everything you wanna consume on platform Equinix in the fabric, um, the ingress is either co-location or edge services. Once you ingress into one place, as Don showed earlier, um, with, with that fabric map, you ingress into one place and you can spray out across our whole fabric. So, um, so, that's the main things we're gonna talk about. Um, and we're gonna talk about the different ways and who you can connect to. You know, we talk a lot about the, the big cloud providers, um, but you know, you can connect uh, yourself as we saw earlier using the, the data center inter interconnect. You can connect to another Equinix customer that's on the fabric. So there's a lot of, uh, a 
other participants on the fabric you can connect to other than the big four cloud providers that we talk about a lot. But, but the focus of this is gonna be um, really designing and thinking about how availability solutions and how you design things. So, so let's take a quick look at the connection scenarios. Um, there's basically three connection scenarios. Um, there's infrastructure on one side of the fabric and there's infrastructure on the other side of the fabric and you wanna create an interconnection between the two. Um, the fabric's job is to create a layer two interconnection or a virtual cross connect between infrastructure on one side to the infrastructure on the other side. Um, the, the first scenario is, is pretty basic, right? You've got some enterprise infrastructure to ingress into the fabric like we talked about earlier. Could either be you know, physical or virtual deployment. And then you're gonna to connect to another participant that's local in the same Metro. So you might have a deployment in Chicago, for example, and you wanna to connect to uh, US East 2 for AWS. Local connection, ingress into Chicago, and you connect to East 2 in, in, uh, in Columbus, Ohio. The second connection, and they're all variations on the, on the same, uh, same theme, but the second connection is um, a local connection in one Metro, use the fabric uh, to connect to another connection, to connect to another participant that's in another metro. But another example for this might be, you know, go back to Chicago, a uh, customer ingressed into Chicago and they want to connect to East One for AWS and DC. So you would, uh, you would ingress into Chicago, create a remote connection, and then uh, connect to US East One in Ashburn in, in DC. So that's, uh, that's scenario two. And scenario three is uh, when you wanna connect to yourself using a, a data center interconnect. Um, uh, you know, ingress into Chicago, egress into DC to create a, a remote connection. Uh, and the, the other uh, scenario would be, doesn't have to be your enterprise infrastructure talking to your enterprise infrastructure. It could be your enterprise infrastructure talking to um, uh, another customer, somebody you do B2B with. Very, very common use case to consolidate those connections in, in, uh, in, in this ecosystem where a lot of uh, customers may already be that you're doing B2B connectivity with. So uh, the fabric is extensible. It's kind of like the old Visa commercial. It's everywhere you want to be. So um, you spin things up as you need them. If you don't need it anymore, you spin it down. Uh, you create bandwidth, uh, bandwidth on demand. Um, maybe you're doing a big data migration. Um, crank a lot of bandwidth up, do the data migration, and then, then crank it down. So that these are basically the three scenarios. Everything is a variation of, of these three scenarios. So uh, all scenarios have the same basic anatomy. There's an A side and a Z side. Same thing that Eric drew out earlier uh, in, in the first, uh, first preso. Um, but there's A side connections coming in, uh, either co-location network edge, connected to the fabric and there's Z side connections going out. Um, the, the A side is consuming the service, the Z side is producing the service or it's a buyer and a seller, whatever you wanna, wanna talk about or however you wanna uh, construct it. But that is the basic anatomy in that it's coming in one side, it's going out the other side. The A side is, is, is buying the service, the Z side is providing the service for you to, for you to consume. Um, and high availability is obviously a part of this ecosystem. Well, you know, what I mentioned earlier, a lot of cloud connections and scenarios, you know, six, eight years ago, probably had one cloud. Now it's many, many clouds on the other side. And they're not always uh, IS providers either, right? You kind of see Zoom there, Akamai, Verizon, um, a, a lot of other providers on the fabric other than cloud providers. Um, so has to be high, uh, high availability is critical once you start building multi-tiered holistic applications on the Z side for the A side to consume across the fabric. So before we delve into kind of HA designs, um, redundancy starts with uh, fabric chassis groups. And Eric talked a little bit about that earlier when he talked about um, when we deploy uh, the fabric switches in a metro, there's an A and a B. Uh, we call it primary secondary. When you log into the portal, you'll see things that refer to primary and secondary. Um, and it, that's just how it's arranged in, in the chassis group. Every uh, deployment gets a primary and a secondary chassis, but it's a nomenclature only thing for us when we call it primary secondary. You control the routing. Um, 
it's just a way when we call it primary and secondary for our provisioning systems to go out and know which, uh, which fabric switch, either the primary or secondary fabric switch to build a virtual circuit on to make sure that you have redundancy when you want to build it. And then the, the main thing you want to do here is um, you want to make sure that you extend the primary and secondary planes out in both directions. So that's how you get redundancy. It all kind of starts in the middle with the primary and secondary fabric switch, but then you have to build left and right to make sure you have redundancy at ingress and redundancy at egress. Um, and, and the main job of those fabric switches is to manipulate uh, layer two constructs to make sure you can build a layer three overlay. Sometimes we'll, we'll uh, translate a, you know, a, a, a a dot one Q VLAN on the A side to a Q and Q uh, C tag on the Z side. Um, in the case of Network Edge, it could be a, a VXLAN network, a network identifier that comes in on the A side and then it gets mapped to a VLAN on the Z side. But that's the main goal of, of the primary and secondary fabric switches is to build that layer two underlay so you can build a layer three overlay. Um, so now let's look at uh, when you extend the A side and the Z side. Looks uh, um, basically the same picture we saw before with redundancy added. So we have the same A side providers we saw before, the same Z side providers we saw before, but um, the connections coming in on the A side are redundant, connections coming out on the, going out on the Z side are redundant. And a, a good um, practice when you're doing high availability designs is you know draw the design, uh, draw a line right down the middle and, and fold the page in half. And if it's a mirror image on each side, um, then you've got a, a really good um, high, availability, high availability design. We're showing this to, we're showing this one in the context of hybrid cloud connectivity, uh, but every design should be that way. Build it, draw a line down the middle and it should, it should look the same on both sides. Um, and, and again, I wanna stress that when we call it primary secondary, it's just that from our standpoint, you have total control over how you want to route it, active, active, active standby. If you want to take the primary leg uh, and, or the secondary leg is active or they both become active, totally up to you. The, the fabric switches are, are providing layer two only. So let's take a look at a, a data center interconnect now, what that looks like. Looks pretty much the same. You just have to make sure that you're mat, mapping the A side and the Z side on both sides. Um, not really reinventing the wheel here. Uh, it, it's, we just wanna make sure that in your, when you go into the portal and instantiate something, you're gonna be looking at the overlay portion of, or you, you're gonna see it as a visual representation of an overlay. So, and, and I'm gonna uh, talk about it in a minute here, about how we can verify the overlay versus the underlay, but um, the, the portal and the workflows are gonna give you the, the overlay visual and the representation. And then the underlay will be built across the primary and the secondary planes. And then again, the fabric is extensible, bandwidth on demand, a very large footprint available everywhere, everywhere you want to be. Um, so once you've built the overlay, um, you need to ensure high availability throughout the portal by verifying the underlay, like I was talking about earlier. So here's how you do it. If you look in the upper left, um, this is the, the visual representation of, of what the portal will show you. In this case, uh, I've got two connections in Chicago. Um, we've got a, a co-location cabinet, both the switches connected in are on VLAN 2500, and they're connected to the primary and the secondary switches, two, or, or two individual ports on the primary and secondary switches uh, in Chicago. They go across the fabric, uh, and they are connected into a firewall cluster that I have on, on Network Edge. So um, on the Network Edge side, Network Edge side of the equation, the Z side, we're seeing uh, VNI 13158 and VNI 13159. So the whole purpose of the, the fabric backbone and the fabric switches are to translate 2500 to 13158 and 13159. That's the layer two underlay. Once the layer two underlay is built, you're ready to apply uh, or you're ready to, to configure routing and layer three overlay that you need across the backbone. Uh, a real uh, quick primer on service profiles. So service profiles are a container of attributes that you apply to a Z side connection. 
And there are many attributes that you can apply to it. You know, who can use uh, the profile, um, which ports it's assigned to, which, v, which speeds are allowed. But one of those attributes that you can also check is called redundancy. So if you check redundancy, the, that invokes a workflow on the A side connection that builds everything you see in the lower left there. So when I built that um, service profile called Brad G cluster test, um, it invoked a workflow and, in, and enforced certain rules when I created the connection in the portal and made the connection from the A side from my physical ports in Chicago. And, and part of what it does is it enforced redundancy and it said, create a connection on the, uh, on the primary fabric and create a connection on the secondary fabric. So if you see in the lower left there, you know, on the, on the port name, you can kind of see the primary connection is, is on the primary and the secondary connection is on the secondary. And we show you a lot of other information too, very verbose, a lot of information if you really want to drill down into it. But, um, you know, we show you the port IDs, the cable IDs, um, we really give you a lot of good detail information. So it's always important to conduct a health check. After you've built it, you know, trust but verify. Make sure that when you built something that in the uh, portal, in the overlay in the upper left, drill down and make sure that the underlay matches the overlay and you're seeing and, and it built exactly what you wanted it to build. Um, so let's look at some best practices now. So uh, the best thing I think you could do is really understand service profiles and workflows uh, because everything we do when we create a, a connection, whether you do it in the portal or via an API or Terraform, it's in the context of a workflow. So if you have service profiles and you understand how the underlay is, you, you understand how to consume the workflows to build exactly what you want to build from an overlay standpoint. Um, next one is understand cloud networking uh, nuances. Um, they're all a little bit different. Uh, they all kind of do it the same way with the same building blocks, but there's just a little tweaks you need to be aware of. But just make sure you understand the nuances between the different cloud providers when you're building. HA solutions. Um, as I talked about earlier, extend the planes to encompass both A side and Z side connections. Very, very important. Z side connections are up to the provider. So if, if you're dealing with a provider, uh, the, the, the big four cloud providers, they're all connected to both the, the primary and secondary fabric. But if, if you're dealing with a provider that you're not sure of, uh, make sure you work with them or a solution architect from Equinix to make sure that the Z side connections are you know, highly available or whatever you're building, um, make sure the Z side connections are highly available uh, because that's up to the provider, not up to Equinix, the provider is responsible for that. Uh, and bring your design experience to the table. You know, we've been doing this stuff for a long time. Uh, we're not really doing anything new. You, you, you build redundancy, you verify our redundancy. We're just, it, we're just asking you to do it and do it a little bit different way with Equinix and we expose that information to you via the portal so you can verify it. Um, and again, verify the design in the portal. Very important for you to make sure that the, the uh, underlay is matching the overlay that you need. And then lastly, you know, the solution architect, uh, they make their living doing this all day, every day. So um, please work, reach out to your solution architect um, and they can work with you designing HA solutions all the way through, because it, it's a different world now. It's not, it's not what it was five, six, seven years ago, where it was just, uh, you know, this death test thing hanging off to the side. It, it, it's, it's crucial, it's critical, it's, it's a core part of your network now. And I think that's it.